Hi, my name's Steve Holland, and I am here to uh, try and persuade you to buy a copy of my new book, The Trials of Hank Jansen. Um, also, to answer some of your questions about Hank Jansen. So, uh, here's the next one. Um, what are some of the scarcities of uh, uh, printed Hank Jansen? Um, well, the Hank Jansen novels in the early 50s, 1953, 19, uh, the beginning of 1954, uh, they were printed in quite high numbers compared to other paperbacks, uh, certainly at the cheap end of the market. Um, there, there were about 100,000 copies of each new book coming off the presses and reprints of the earlier books as well. So um, they are not particularly scarce. Um, a lot of them have fallen into uh, the deep, dark pit that is a book collector's collection. So uh, the heed covers don't always turn up that often. Uh, they don't always turn up in fantastic condition. Um, a lot of the books, and I had the, uh, my dad said this, uh, and my Uncle John had told me as well, um, they were passed around classrooms and people would rip the covers off because if you got caught with them, uh, it would be uh, uh, the cane. So, uh, yeah, so uh, in a lot of instances, the covers were ripped off. So uh, they haven't all survived, but they have survived in reasonable numbers. You can still build up a, a collection of Hank Jansen novels. The very first one, uh, When Dames Get Tough. Now, we know that that was a, a print run of 20,000 and came about because a printer had some spare paper, had some capacity on his uh, printing presses and wanted a novel fast. So uh, Francis had to write one over a weekend. And the result was uh, When Dames Get Tough, uh, the very first Hank Jansen novel. And uh, uh, I'm very fortunate enough to have a copy. So, uh, yes, it's it's just a slim little novelette. It's only 24 pages long. Um, you wouldn't write home about it, but uh, it is the first one and it is quite scarce. Now, the second novel is even scarcer. It's called Scarred Faces, and for many years, collectors thought it might be a ghost title, because nobody knew of any collector who had a copy. Uh, the book was certainly not to be found in any of the major and copyright libraries in the UK. So there were rumours, certainly, that, that the book did not exist. A few years ago, probably 25 years ago now, um, some copies came to light. So I was very fortunate, and that is a copy of Scarred Faces. There still aren't many copies known, so I'm, I feel very fortunate to uh, have one here. I, ha I do have a theory as to why a book like Scarred Faces almost seemingly disappeared entirely, and it's all to do with that cover. This is not the sort of cover that you might have sneakily gone into a newsagent and bought it and tucked it into your pocket quickly and uh, read it under the covers. Um, but you're not going to give that to a hawker at a market, a second-hand book dealer um, or someone like that. You're not going to sell that at a jumble sale because I think people would look at you rather askew and uh, wonder what sort of thing you're reading. So I think, and and, and being slim as well, uh, it actually consisted of two novelettes, um, Scarred Faces and Kitty Took the Rap. It's only 64 pages, and I think a lot of them went straight in the bin um, rather than uh, getting into the second-hand market at all. So I think that's one of the reasons why Scarred Faces in particular, uh, with its uh, bondage cover, uh, is very, very scarce. Uh, when Reg Carter took over the Hank Jensen novels, um, he was uh, publishing them as New Fiction Press, and then um, when he was jailed, New Fiction Press had to go into liquidation. So he relaunched, with Steve Francis, he relaunched Hank Jensen as Alexander Morring. There were many things that went on that 
uh, Stephen Francis knew nothing about. Um, uh, his, his business dealings with Carter were on a gentleman's agreement uh, rather than a contract. Reg, after he came out of jail, uh, Stephen Francis always said that he looked upon the world in a slightly twisted way and was always talking about the handcuffs uh, that the police would have on him. And a lot of his business dealings were not necessarily him doing wrong, but he was mixing with a an odd crowd and almost inevitably taking the, the fall for a lot of things that went wrong. Um, businesses came and went. His golden goose was Hank Jansen, so he tried to exploit Hank Jansen in a number of ways, um, reprinting old books under new titles. And uh, uh, one way was this, uh, the crime comic album. It contains a complete story, Hank, the Statuette and the Englishman. It is very badly drawn, as you can see. No idea who the artist is. But, uh, but I'm glad to say you didn't do anything else that I've seen. That you can, you can find. Uh, you may have to search for quite some time, but, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a completist. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've got a copy, but to be frank, I haven't, uh, this is the first time it's been out of the box for quite a few years. Um, the one I'm, I do like, and I'm very proud to uh, have, is the Hank Jansen Blues music sheet uh, with a lovely heat cover uh, with a ghastly crease right across the middle of it. And Shelton uh, did uh, the song the Hank Jansen Blues uh, with uh, lyrics by Peter Cornish and George Correll did the music. You hear a little clip of the Hank Jansen Blues um, introducing each video. I just thought it was the most apt thing I could think of to use as a piece of music. I can only use a tiny little clip. Um, but the song itself is, is only about three minutes long. And if you dig around Spotify, you can hear the whole thing. Anyway, um, they're just a, a, a few uh, interesting and scarce items that relate to Hank Jansen. Uh, something that is not scarce and it easily bought is the trials of Hank Jansen. So uh, I'll leave you with a picture of that and hope that you are persuaded to go out and buy a copy.